when I'm painting and when I'm in nature, the resonance of that is so deeply grounding and calming that I really, my great hope is to just infuse the art with the resonance of that. Welcome back, everybody, to another fun and inspiring episode of Beyond the Palette. I'm your host, Whitney Rosenson, owner of Art Dimensions, and today I'm interviewing Anne Ward, a fabulous painter here in the LA area. I cannot wait to chat with Anne about her artistic endeavors. She's a new artist at Art Dimensions, so I'm really looking forward to getting to know her better. All right, now for a bit of admin. Listeners, Be sure to check out Anne's amazing paintings at artdimensionsonline.com. From the homepage in the upper right-hand corner, click artists and then scroll down until you see Anne's name and thumbnail. And if you click on that, it will take you to her page. You can also follow both of us on Instagram at artdimensions and at anneward.art. And Anne is with an E at the end. Also, throw us some stars and review Beyond the Palette if you can. It really helps us to expand our reach and listenership. Hi, Anne. Good morning. Good morning. Welcome to Beyond the Palette. How are you? I'm so happy to be here. Oh, good. I'm so glad to have you. Thank you for being here, for taking time out of your busy schedule to chat with me. I really appreciate it. Let's dive in. For those listeners who don't know who you are, can you give us a brief snapshot of your journey to where you are today? Well, let's see. I began from the time I was quite young being interested in art and no one in my family was an artist, um, but I had the awareness when I was about four and a half or five years old that that was what I was going to do with my life if it was possible. So after um, college, I went to UCLA And when I graduated, I began working for a film director and worked on a bunch of movies. And um, I kept saving money so that I could eventually take time off to study art. And I was living in France after we um, finished a movie there. And I went outside with an easel uh, for the first time. And I just thought, boy, if I can, if this could be my livelihood, I will die the happiest person. So oh. that was 30 some odd years ago. Okay. So you have been, so you, did you always want to be an artist or was it just after the films, the films? Stuff? Always. You know, the, the truth is that at a very young age, I had a near death encounter and I, um, at four and a half, all I can say is that it really formed formed my path. You know, I remember the experience of it, but also the clarity of knowing, like a a sense of knowingness that that's what I wanted to do with my life. Mm, Amazing. I mean, thank God you didn't get it. I know. It was amazing. It was amazing. And I just thought, boy, if I, you know, I just always, always created. And I just, it was always my dream to be an artist always. Okay. That's so beautifully said. Let's talk about plain air painting because that I know is the term that is people use to refer to your work. Can you explain to the listeners who might not know what that means? So it's going outside with an easel and painting from life. And it is so challenging because it requires not only the sort of the skills of observation, but a flexibility of a flexibility on the spot. And I find it so thrilling to paint from life and try to capture the light. It's wildly challenging to do and it's wildly rewarding. Mm. Okay, so it's when you go outside with your easel and you have your own garden at home. Is that where you do most of your painting? Yes, that is my obsession. So (laughs) I just, (laughs) I love it out there so much. Just the, you know, to to have an easel in proximity to things that are alive, to um, the way that light is changing, um, to try and capture that is just an absolute thrill because 
there's, it's sort of like organizing chaos. You just, you go out there and it's not that nature is, is chaos. Na nature is such perfection, but it's trying to distill what you're seeing um, in a way. And, and I think the thing that I love about it also is it forces an improvisation, but it also naturally forces a, um, a time constraint. Right, because the light. The light. The light is like, yeah. it's temporary. It's temporary. And it's so fleeting. And it's just, so I just, I love the challenge of really trying to use a material that will allow me to sort of capture some of the translucency of what I'm seeing and um, the luminosity of what I'm seeing. Oh, your paintings are so serene and calm. What do you um, what do you hope people get from your paintings when they look at them? Oh, I hope just that. I mean, for me, being creative and especially being out in the garden, it's it's all such a um, a ballast for the world being in such transition. It really is my practice of um, finding center. It's my practice of being grounded and um, really being present. So uh, the greatest compliment to me is when someone feels calm and soothed by being around my art, because that's a real, that's, that's one of the motivating factors for creating it in the first place. Oh, so cool. That is that, I mean, just personally, that is how I feel when I'm surrounded or looking at your paintings. Oh, I, someone recently said to me that she she bought a painting and she said, it's like, I look at your painting and it feels like a window onto possibility, but also like being on vacation where I feel really calmed. And I said, that is great. That makes, that's, that drives me to create art. That's a great testimonial. I mean, that's, you know, test, I don't know if testimonial is the right word, but that's a great reflection on your work for sure. Talking about you feeling centered and grounded, I know you also teach. Yes. Okay. So does let's talk about your teaching experience and what you're, you know, what you focus on in that with that, because you do have another body of work besides your painting. So let's get into yes. that. Okay. So I am obsessed with, I think, I guess the best way to describe it is just reminding people of their birthright, which is we are all creative and it is so easy to lose um, the touchstone in a busy world. And I love helping people, just guiding them back to the remembrance of, of their creativity. And, you know, so many people will say, I don't have time, I don't know how to draw, I can't draw a stick figure. I say nonsense. I think there is, you know, there are so many ways to get back in touch with a simple practice that can be so centering. And that's a creative practice. So one way I love to do that is helping people use the iPad as a tool for creating every day. And I use my iPad as a way to create art, a way to stay creative and, and a way to use it as a digital sort of digital sketchbook, but also a place for creating possibility for myself because it allows me to create time. It allows me to get clarity on what I want to, to create. And then to just create digital paintings is so much fun. So how long, just on average, how long does it take you to create one digital piece? It's really interesting because the whole creative practice, I find that it just puts me in this place of, of the only way I can describe it is it's sort of a wordless place where you're so present creating that you lose track of time. And so I'm often surprised to go back in and see how long it took me to create something digital. I can make the replay that's about, you know, 15 seconds long. But when I look at the time that it took, sometimes it can be four hours, sometimes it can be 12 hours. But the process is so, it's, it's so rich and it's so rewarding and it's so much fun that I don't ever, I, I don't have an awareness of how much time it is. That's so awesome. Where can people who are listening, who might be interested in taking a class from you, how can they find out about 
I guess that would be on my website, um, Anne with an E, Ward studio.com and there'll be a link in there to um, my teachable is where I do those classes and I'm hoping to to add to those so that there'll also be classes just in journaling with a pencil very analog also awesome yeah thank you for sharing that I read on I think it was anwardstudio.com that you have a journal of the iPad work available on Amazon Yes. Okay. So tell, yeah, I want to know about that. I, I'd been making the art on the iPad because, you know, as we were talking about, I began 30 years ago, plein air painting. And as my kids were growing up, I, I found it became so difficult to try and find the time to put my easel in the car and drive 45 minutes to go and paint. So what I began doing was creating sort of situations where I could be plein air painting, but still life outside in oil, and then also using the iPad um, and tucking it into my bag and making time for art every single day without excuse. And so at a certain point, I had so many, you know, sketches and paintings done on the iPad. I thought, gosh, that'd be really cool to share that in the form of the book as a journal. And really, I made a point to include paintings that that weren't finished, that were about sort of the vulnerability of the process in the hopes that sharing the journal would inspire people to to stay creative. So that Mm. was my motivation. And what is it called? Isn't this funny? Uh, It's called uh, If Paintings Could Talk, an iPad journal. Okay. If Paintings Could Talk, an iPad journal is available on Amazon and I'm going to buy one. I can't wait oh, to, great. can't wait to look at that and read that. And has COVID affected your practice at all? It did in the sense that, you know, mercifully I didn't have, you know, COVID and, and I was still able to continue making art. Um, I think it doubled my resolve and my appreciation to be in the garden and to appreciate what's in my my yard and my surroundings. Um, it did affect me in a very, you know, in a really positive way in that I found that that people were were really appreciating their own homes and what was on their walls in a very different way and the energy of that. Oh, I love that you said that because it's just a different answer than I'm used to getting and all of the answers are fantastic, but a lot of people, you know, have said, well, it didn't really affect my practice because I always, I work alone. It's, you know, being an artist is, can be a very isolating career and it was no different for me during COVID. So you had a, your perspective is totally different, which I really appreciate. I mean, don't you find too, it's really distilled and clarified, like what's important in it for me, you know, what, what, what is worthy of subtracting? And I think even just, you know, on, on a sense of who, you know, the, making a choice about what and with which, you know, one is interacting. Yeah. I, I just how you're going to spend your time, right? Yeah, exactly. Many lessons to be learned. I think, but I'm saying that, but you're the teacher. <laughs> <I know. laughs> well, that's what I have found. It's just really, it's, it's helped me eliminate the things that were distracting from from your practice from my practice yeah describe your aesthetic in three words oh gosh think three words is so hard Whitney I know I know (laughs) um I would say uplifting inspired by nature and I guess the clarity of light is something that really inspires me. Fantastic. All right. Uh, So what inspires you to paint besides nature? Or is it mostly, I mean, obviously nature is a huge inspiration, but is it also what? I, I, I think it's, I think it's, it's really the thing that I can't deny is that when I'm painting and when I'm in nature, the resonance of that is so deeply grounding and calming that I really, my great hope is to just infuse the art with, with the resonance of that. 
so that someone is not just buying something static that's on their wall, they're really buying something that hopefully they can feel sort of the experience of that. They can feel that, you know, that what is on their walls is inspiring them and, and helping them to feel calmed. And one of the pieces that you have, that light at the deep end, I painted during COVID. And I painted it very specifically for my wall because I wanted my wall to be sort of like a, a sort of a, a, a portal to being on vacation and what that feeling was to me. So that when I walked in, I could go, ah, oh, yeah, like that feeling of being on vacation. Being on vacation, there that is in my, you know, in my house. And I, I like for that to be the experience of someone viewing my art. So that painting, just so everyone knows, it's on the Art Dimensions website. Um, so take a look. It's called Light at the Deep End, because I, I just also felt like, you know, there's it's so easy in this moment when the world is topsy-turvy to see the darkness and forget the light. And there is always light. And there is light in that painting at the deep end. Thank you for saying that. Thank you so much. Ah, all right. What are your favorite materials to work with? And why? You know, I honestly, I love, right now I've been experimenting, pushing th that same idea of sort of translucency with opacity to, to, to really just keep trying to in paint, get the, that luminous quality that I see out in the yard. And it, so I'll do that in acrylic or gouache outside and you kind of get one shot at it. You just, you get out there, you put in a wash, you put it in bold, and then you have to kind of hedge against it. But it, it really drives me to keep trying in oil and in acrylic to get there. And also every single day I'm painting on the iPad. I just, I love, I love using technology and I love helping people to use technology in a way that it is empowering, you know, to, to use technology to serve one's creativity is a great thing. Well, I know David Hockney used, did the iPad paintings. What, do you know, what other artists did this? Do you know? Any others that use the iPad? Gosh, a lot of people do. A lot of people do. I know that he was using them also on location. And a lot of people now are using them to, to paint plein air. I find it really tricky outside to try and do that. Paint from nature with an iPad. There's too much glare. But I just, I just love using it to metabolize sort of the ideas um, that I'm seeing during the day or something that grabs my attention and then just use, use it as a tool for that. There's, it's so cool that you can teach, that you use that and you teach that. And the iPad paintings are, are also on my website, I believe. Um, and if they're not, I will add some more images to your page on my site so people can check those out. What's your favorite aspect about being an artist and what's the hardest part? Oh, gosh. I think the best um, aspect of being an artist is that it really, um, gosh, it's such a great privilege. And I'm, I'm so appreciative of um, being able to make art every day. It really is the biggest gift to be able to listen to the yearnings of your heart and use that as a compass in life. I mean, just what a what an incredible gift that is. And then to find that that those you know yearnings in one's heart also resonate with an audience is just beyond. It's so lucky. So um, that's the greatest gift of I think being an artist. It just aligns you to a mindset where it doesn't the creative mindset doesn't stop at the easel. So that I think is, is one of the difficult aspects of being an artist too, is that everything in my life is art. You know, my walls, my, you know, surroundings, my garden, everything. So you just don't stop editing. Or, yeah. Yeah, you don't stop. So I, I'm really lucky that my husband, Ian, is 
an artist also, it takes such discipline to really keep rolling up your sleeves and keep moving forward with art. So I'm really lucky to have a companion. That's so beautiful. That's so nice to hear. That's just refreshing. And I'm grateful to have a companion too, although I'm not an artist, but, no. but that's great to hear. I think people need to be more appreciative of that. You know, you live with your companion or you see your companion all the time and you take it for granted, but you should not take that for granted. All right. Any advice for emerging artists who might be listening to this podcast? Gosh, this is an incredible time to be an artist. There's so many technology has really opened up, you know, just all kinds of avenues for showing art. It's, it's radically transforming the ways in which one can reach an audience. So I would say, you know, keep creating. I, I find that for me personally, painting from life, and I'm, I'm mostly self-taught. So I think that painting from life and, and the discipline of that keeps me truthful in my art. That for me, that's that, you know, seeing relationships. So I would say just, you know, really don't be deterred and know that you're in this moment. Working digitally can allow an artist to save on materials and to get clarity on, you know, the, the, what they're wanting to create without the expense of the space and, and the materials. So I, and, and to reach an audience in ways they couldn't have. A broader, yeah, a broader audience and yeah. What iPad do you use? Well, I just upgraded, even though I didn't need to, but I'm interested in all kinds of ways to use the iPad. And since I'm teaching, I just upgraded to the uh, iPad Pro that's like the 12 and a half inch. And I love it so much. And the processor is faster. I've, I've used older ones. It's not necessary. It was definitely an indulgence. But um, the Apple Pencil is incredible. And at some point or another, I, I sometimes like to make things, you know, tangible items like uh, sculpting things. And so I've created a 3D print and I got the new iPad so that I could learn to sculpt digitally or create augmented reality. I mean, there's just so many amazing things that are happening. Sounds fabulous. <laughs> yeah. I might have to take a class from you. <laughs> <laughs> so amazing. All right. I want to wrap up with some just fun, quick questions. Okay. All right. Favorite food. Favorite food. Geez, I could eat rice and beans, you know, every single day, but I do, I do love making things for my garden. I grow a lot of food out there. So fruits and vegetables. Yeah. Vegetables. Definitely vegetables. All right. Favorite color. Oh, that's so hard right now. Okay. I, I love, gosh, I'm, I'm obsessed with turquoise. That's just, that's, that's, that's a no brainer, but recently I'm obsessed kind of with the shade of, of purple. I don't use it in my paintings, but I just love this sort of plum color. Okay. Makes me happy. Favorite season. That's so hard. <laughs> um, okay. I'll say that right now, this season in the yard is my absolute favorite because, you know, I've planted sunflowers that started as seedlings, let's say, geez, they must have been on my kitchen counter five weeks ago. And suddenly you look out in the yard and they're growing exponentially each day, which is so incredible. So I would say right now until June 21st is my absolute favorite time to be out in the yard. All right. You're very, you know, have you heard this saying, be here now? Yes. Yes. Okay. I just think of that when I, as I'm talking to you. Favorite music. Do you listen to music while you paint? And if so, what's your favorite music to listen to? I like recently listening to things that are just something that's like, you know, music that's sort of the vibration of really that make makes me really happy so that I'm really conscientiously putting that also into my paintings. Oh, beautifully said. And is there anything else you want the listeners to know about you before we before we wrap up? Oh gosh, I just hope everyone, you know, that is is listening to aspiring artists, to existing artists. I mean, I just 
I think it's so important right now to stay creative. It's really the superpower that we all have to lean into right now. And the world needs beauty and beauty keeps us hopeful. So it, thank you for interviewing me and thank you for you know, anyone that was listening. Oh, well, thank you very, very much. That you were an awesome guest to have on the podcast. Um, so thank you, Anne. And thank you everyone for tuning in. I hope everyone listening and you, Anne, have a happy and healthy week and happy creating.